versus Ronda Rousey, the biggest star in mixed martial arts. She has shown nothing but total dominance inside the octagon. Looking to knock her out. That's Cole Hale. Wow. Very impressive stand up. But when you start saying things about my family and disrespecting the things that my family has been through, I have to make such an example out of her. This is personal. It's about proving a point and punishing someone. Okay, so we welcome in MMA analyst Chael Sonnen to talk UFC 190 Saturday night from the HSBC Arena in Rio. Obviously, Bantamweight champion Ronda Rousey making her sixth title defense uh, against, Brazil let me make sure I get this name right, Brazilian striker, it's Betch Cahaya. I think that sounds perfect. Nailed it. Yeah, yeah, Nailed hi. It. Nailed it. Yeah, even if it's not. Um, but let's talk about these two. There's been a, a, a war of words going on for some time. I think, obviously, a little bit of trash talk is expected, but it got out of hand. Kind of uh, okay, so let me tell you guys what happened. Betch Coea said, and I quote, when this fight is over, Ronda Rousey is going to want to commit suicide. Now, there is no way to make a suicide comment lighthearted or funny. There just simply isn't. Also, what she did not know is Ronda Rousey's father died of a suicide when Ronda was a little girl. This was the motivation that Ronda needed. Ronda seeks motivation. Obviously, easy to find. In Betch's defense, guys, she immediately apologized. All right, so Ronda obviously had said some words about this. She said she didn't like it. She said she was upset about it, and she was going to make her an example, correct? That's exactly right. All right, so moving forward, if we want to talk about this fight, it's obviously in Koya's hometown, in her native country, rather. So how do you see, set the scene, what happens? Okay, you know, uh, not enough has been made about the fact that Ronda has taken the fight in Brazil. Home court advantage doesn't always matter uh, right. in this sport of mixed martial arts. When it's in Brazil, it does. It's a very hostile territory. The crowd is very loyal to their countrymen. We don't share that in America. In America America, we will cheer for whoever we want, not just because he represents our flag. In Brazil, they chant as you walk to the cage, you will die, you will die. That's a very hostile environment by its definition. Ronda Rousey is loved over there, but I assure you, on fight night, they will back their own. A lot of people looked at this fight and they said, oh, it's Ronda Rousey, I don't care who she's fighting, she's going to win. You were a lone voice that said, now wait a minute, might not be that easy. Cohea is 5-0, oh. what do you like about what she brings? there to the octagon. Yeah, I'll tell you what, she's 5-0 in the UFC. She's 12-0 overall. She's got a very good record. She's very mean. She's an ornery girl and a real relevance to this fight. You know, when you watch her here, this whole highlight reel is largely going to be her striking. She dips to the left. She throws a powerful right hand. She's good at blocking defense. She comes right back with shots. This is what a good fighter does. But as you watch her boxing ability, as you watch her able to land these strikes at will, guys, what you're not seeing is the reason she's on her feet is because because her grappling is so good, that's where everybody has struggled against Ronda Rousey. She gets him to the ground, she stretches her arms out. Betch is a little bit different. Betch's wrestling is to the point that she can let the fight stay on the feet as long as she wants, and she delivers big, powerful shots. She's not afraid of Ronda Rousey. She's either. not afraid and of Ronda Rousey. She asked to be said for this for fight. There's exactly. something to be said. You don't for think it. that's just? I, I would think everyone's afraid of Ronda Rousey. I'm sorry. Not, but not publicly you? for her. I definitely. Are you kidding me? Yeah. <laughs> Is she here? <laughs> Is she I'll hiding go, here somewhere? I'll go to the other studio. All right, Chill. We appreciate that. We're going to get a prediction uh, from you next hour as to whether you like uh, Betch even more than perhaps other people. Okay. Well, thank you so much, sir. Coming up next, folks, take a look. We are in uh, Inglewood, Colorado. There. Do we see Peyton out there? There he is. We are back. Sports Center on the road at Broncos Training Camp. On watch ESPN tomorrow, 9 p.m. Eastern. Uh -huh. it's, a, it's a seamless transition. Going seamless. From boxing yes. to MMA and talking with Chael Sonnen. And we've talked all about UFC 190 coming up uh, in Rio. We've talked about the main event, Ronda Rousey and Betch Correa. Cohea. Cohea. Yes. It sounds good. We promised your prediction. <laughs> You are going to deliver on that promise. You said someone's O got to go. It has to go. Look, we got two undefeated ladies in there. I think this is pretty simple. If Ronda Rousey can get to top position, and she's an Olympic bronze medalist, says that she can get on top with her judo background, I think that she can wear Betch out. Now, I think skill for skill, Betch can keep up with her on her feet. I think Ronda's got big problems, particularly if Betch gets inside and starts working those body shots. She can drain Ronda's battery down. If Ronda's condition is superior, it should be, guys. But Ronda has a problem, which is she has been in a bet a total of 60 seconds worth of fighting in her last three competitions. If she begins to get too comfortable with herself, hasn't put the miles in on the road, hasn't put the time in in the gym, and she doesn't show up in shape, she's got big problems. So you say... Ronda Rousey. Second round? In a long about way. I think that's a fair... No, it'll definitely get out of the first round. Two or three. All right, two or three. So it says Chell Sun. We appreciate you, sir. Thank you. We've got top ten plays. He's hanging out with us. The not top ten. And you and I both chuckled at this one. 
It is Eddie Butler who trips twice One more time. for the Rockies. Oh, there you go, Eddie. Right? And he was definitely out. All right, Dodgers, Mets. Carl Crawford pops up left. Take a look. Conforto, Tejeda, both go for the ball. Mine, yours. That happened to us when we were on the set the other day. Yeah. Remember? It was, yeah, and I got the worst of it. You did? Yeah. Number eight, Phillies Cubs, Freddie Galvis to right. Hey, Addison Russell missing the diving catch. You, you applaud the effort. I don't know where this was intended for Anthony Rizzo, to no one in particular. To no one. No one. And Chill, you, you said you played baseball. You ever do something like that? Yes, I, he did. No, but I could have. That was in my wheelhouse. What about this? Uh, White Sox, Red Sox. Take a look. Mike Napoli strikes out looking. Uh, he slams his helmet on the ground. It bounces and, yeah, it's the umpire. You think he did it on purpose? I don't think so. I don't know. I don't think he saw it until we played it on Sports Center. I didn't even know what was going on. <laughs> Number six, Phillies, Blue Jays. I got it. You got it. Nobody's got it. Who's Cody, got it? Me. Cody I Ash missed playing it. Three Phillies there, huh? right in the middle. Everything coming up Millhouse for uh, for the Blue Jays lately. Okay, so you know what? I don't think these guys are as tough as they say they are. There's a staffer posing as an Ohio State mannequin. He scares uh. Cardale Jones and Chris Samuel. Really? They're really scared? Come on. <laughs> he tumbles in the chair. It seems a little staged for me. I'm not buying it. For sure. Number four, Braves Phillies, Dom Brown. Trying to get back to second base, tagged by Andleton Simmons. Umpire calls him safe, but look. <laughs> Simmons. I don't know what's so bad about this. Right? He tried to get him, he missed. Brown yeah, took his hand off the bag. He's out. What are you doing? <laughs> this is the best right here. Yeah, we're coming in at number three. Pirates twins. Andrew McCutcheon gets a base hit to right. The ball gets by Nunez at oh, it's third. Not over yet. And runs and here it is. We're still not done. Trying there we go. Run <laughs> home. You know what? He scored, though. McCutcheon scored due to interference, so that's a top, kind of. He's giggling at this. He loves his football. I don't know how that's not the best. Number two, Yankees, Rangers, Prince Fielder to the right side. And it's sort of second, but but look at the hit. It's Elvis Andrews. Hit look at that. Well, wait. What happened there? Guys? Anybody you said it was downtown yeah. business it was earlier. The downtown yeah. business district is where. Yeah, downtown business district. Uh, and number one, single A baseball, Delmarva Shorebirds, Augusta Green Jackets, Elliot Leva. Hits the home run, but he's 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 out because he doesn't touch home plate, and that that is happens. Your worst play of the week. The not top ten is brought to you by. Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. For Randy Scott and Carrie Champion, that wraps this hour of SportsCenter. Another live hour of SportsCenter coming up. Child, thanks for hanging out with us what live.